Greetings programs. In this video, we're going to be working on my Commodore PET 2001 keyboard. This is the machine I rescued back in January 2020, and we recently revisited it in May of 2022. During that process, I noticed a few keys were not working 100%, and today we're going to get those fixed up once and for all. The keys that are giving me issues are W, reverse off, and quotes. And out of those three, the quote key is really important for loading things, specifically programming, etc. So sit back, relax, and let's jump right in and fix this keyboard properly once and for all. Here we've got the lid to my PET 2001 open with the kickstand. For those that haven't seen the inside of the machine, this is what it looks like. There's the main board and power supply. And to get the keyboard out, you need to first unplug the keyboard cable, which is this cable right here. And then you've got, a, I think it's 12 screws uh, right along here and back here that have to come out. And then the keyboard will just lift right down and we can set it on the table and we can work on it. But I will be moving the pet out of the way to give me some room. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, got the keyboard out. And next I need to remove all of those uh, 19 tiny flathead screws. Ah, <sighs> hopefully this is the last time. Two hours later. I have removed all 19 flathead screws. I've got them in this little container right here. Next up, I need to desolder these two wires from the caps lock button. And then I can take the circuit board off and start uh, working on the conductive pads. And looking at all this tape here holding the two wires. Uh, this is a new piece, new piece, new piece. This is an original piece, and that just looks really ugly having all that tape there. So I think what I'm going to do when I put this all back together is just use one piece of blue painter's tape right in this area here, and that'll keep the wire nice and taut on the back of the circuit board. All right, out to the soldering iron to get this disconnected. Here I am out at my workbench getting the soldering iron warmed up so I can remove those two wires and look at all this stuff on my workbench. I've got so many projects going on right now, but this pet keyboard is uh, taking top priority. The Weller uh, is heated up, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove those wires, but I wanted to show a quick little shot of my workbench and how crazy of a mess it is with chips and capacitors and just stuff. Geek for life. All right, be right back. A few seconds later, the wires are removed, and now we can remove the circuit board. So let's go back inside and get that done, get to work. We're now back inside, and I have removed the circuit board from the keyboard, exposing all the conductive pads on the bottom of all the keys on the keyboard. Next step is to uh, apply the conductive paint, which you see here. This was ordered off of Amazon. I will put a link in the description. It comes highly recommended by Adrian of Adrian's Digital Basement, as well as my buddy, Nathan. Uh, they both have used these on various keyboards and controllers and stuff. And specifically, Adrian has used it on his pet keyboard repairs as well. So if it worked for him, it's gonna work for me for sure. Here's the back of the packaging, tells you what it does. The instructions says it'll dry in 10 to 15 minutes and it's good to go within a couple of hours. But per Adrian's recommendation, I'm gonna let this sit at least overnight, if not a, a day or two, and uh, make sure it's good and dry before I put this all back together, put it in the pet and test it. So the next clip you're gonna see is after I've applied 
it all to the bottom of the keycaps there and apparently it's like a silver paint so we'll see how that turns out in a few minutes it has been a little while and i've applied the conductive paint to all the keys here's my note little pad where i wrote down the quote off reverse and w were the keys that were acting up but i went ahead and did every single key so that way hopefully I'll never need to take this uh, circuit board off the back ever again, and the keyboard will work for another 30, 40 years. Initially, I was just gonna do the keys that were acting up, but after talking to uh, Mr. Lurch and Adrian Black and a couple other friends, yeah, if you're gonna work on a keyboard like this, just do it, do them all, and save yourself a bunch of headache. So anyways, uh, that is the keyboard. The instructions do say to wait 15, 20 minutes for it to become dry, full curing within an hour under room temperature conditions. I'm gonna let this sit overnight just, just to be 100% sure everything is nice and cured and dried. Then I will put the circuit board back on, put in all the screws, and then give it a test on the pet. After letting the conductive paint dry for about 24 to 26 hours, I went ahead and put the circuit board back on the keyboard, reinstalled all 19 flathead screws, which was a pain in the butt. I hope I never have to do it again. I also resoldered the caps lock wires, removed the old masking tape, and installed some black electrical tape to hold the wires out of the way. And now I'm going to reinstall the whole keyboard into the PET 2001, test some keys, hope for the best, load some software, and then hopefully never ever have to mess with this keyboard again and just continue enjoying this PET 2001 computer. Let's get the keyboard reinstalled and see what happens. Okay, got the camera on the tripod and we are going to test the keyboard. Let's type in catalog. That's working. Let's try loading. Load quote dollar sign quote comma eight also for the directory. And that is looking like the keyboard is working. I've gone ahead and dimmed the lights down, so this will hopefully show up really good trying to grab the screen on camera. Off camera, I typed in a 530 line basic program to test all the keys on the keyboard, and I'm pretty sure I used every key on the keyboard, but I did manually go through and test every key, but I didn't think you would want to sit through and watch that. But what you do want to see is this really cool program that I typed in. So let me go ahead and type run, press return. Look at that. The Commodore Chicken Lips logo, PET 2001, ready. And they say you can't do graphics on a PET 2001. Well, there you go. Using the uh, pet ski graphics. Got the Chicken Lips PET 2001 logo. Pretty sweet. Man, what a journey. Got this machine back in January 2020. Started to revisit it two years later. Some of the keys weren't working. Fixed the keyboard again, because I did work on it back in 2020. But this time, as you saw, I did conductive paint on every keycap, and it works great. I want to thank Mr. Lurch and Adrian Black of Adrian's Digital Basement. They both pushed me over the edge, so to speak, to do the conductive paint and do it right the second time, <laughs> two years later. So thanks, guys. I really appreciate your help. I also want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see them right there on the paper in front of the pet machine. Those are the folks that support me on Patreon and it's greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to check out the links in my description. I have a new area called Friends of the Channel. Those are other YouTubers, friends and 
associates that I want to link to and share some love. So check out their links. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing to their channels. Thank you for watching my video. It's greatly appreciated. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.